Hey everyone, Rascal here. And Mama. Welcome to our podcast. Today we're covering the Monster High Valentine special. Why do ghouls fall in love? Because they said so. <laughs> Dracula, our sweet 1600th birthday. That's it's an extra familiar, special occasion it? to party at Monster High. But her high <laughs> expectations lead to daily results when she's faced with the choice between her boyfriend Claude and her new vampire heartthrob Valentine, a romantic blast from her past. <laughs> and before we get started, it's a long past. Yeah. Be sure, before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get updates of future podcasts and want to pause videos. Yes. Now, and I know, more Monster High. Yes. I love Monster High. The original franchise, not the new crap. Right. And this is one of our entertainment's favorite Monster High movie slash specials. Yes, definitely. One of my top five. And for this one, um, now the movies kind of range from either being maybe 40 minutes to a little bit over an hour or 90 minutes. And this one about reaches, I think, the hour mark. So for just 60 minutes, you know, no commercials or anything, it really tells a great, cute, fluffy story, really. It's a really great movie to watch, not just for Valentine's Day, not just for February, just any yes. day of the year. It's just all that Even much. Even in of October, they're fun to watch, which is what right. we do every year. We watch all of them all over again. Right. It's just such a wonderful movie that you don't mind whenever you see it. As long as it's not December. <laughs> and it's fun and of course they're they're freaky, fashionable, and fabulous. Mm -hmm. And if you are not familiar with this franchise, it is the children of um, many of the most famous monsters in pop culture, folklore, musical history. Mm -hmm. I mean musical movie history. And they all go to high school together, but they aren't like in the old movies. They're updated, new. Again, they're fashionable, they're wealthy, they're beautiful, they all have different personalities. They have the freaky flaws and all. Yes, and they are living high school life. So it's it's really it's a really fun front it was, I should say, a really fun franchise. And there's some really wonderful voice actors you're familiar with. Just gonna give a shout out to the few that are in this movie. Laura Bailey, Augie Banks, Cam Clark, Debbie uh, Derryberry, uh, Kate Higgins. That's all I can think of right now. Mark mm -hmm. Mercado. Mm -hmm. So And Cam Clark. Yeah, I just say Cam Clark. Oh, well, I can give a double shout out. Yes. And in every episode, you've got all these fabulous voice actors that you know and love doing these characters. They made them famous, they made them their own. So, again, you can give some more love and hear more of some of your favorites in this story. Right. In this uh, story. Franchise. So, now back to the movie. It's fun. Right, it's absolutely fun, and the 1600th birthday thing you might remember is the same thing happened with Hotel Transylvania with the same exact story with the 1600th birthday, so kind of tells you how long they take to age in this universe. <laughs> now, uh, Draculaura dates Claude, and Claude is a werewolf, and Draculaura, of course, is you the, can get from the name, she is the, a vampire who eats tomatoes. She's a, veg <laughs> she's a, she's a vegetarian. Yeah. And they, Actually, she's a vegan because she eats no type of animal, anything. Right. And they also show the little bit of her backstory of, you know, how she came to Monster High and how it was like a misunderstanding between the the humans and the vampires and how they were drove out of Transylvania and came all the way to, I don't know, or I think they're in Oregon, ironically. <laughs> And they also show how she uh, met Valentine. I guess it was their, her past love. And he looks no different than he did like a uh, thousand years ago. <laughs> and he tells her that he created the holiday just for her. And, and then she's they, swoony and they're like, but they, isn't that his last name? <laughs> this is the way to If he named after you, why is he named after him? And like, uh, the details. <laughs> I was like, I'm just going to ignore that. That was funny. And... And for here, you, there's always a little theme in these movies where there's some sort of antagonist adversary. And they're not sort of like the ones they have now, like with Monica Decay or these big major villains. They're just sort of like right. the mini antagonists that threaten to break apart what you know about Monster High and the characters. And that's pretty much what Valentine was. And he had his 
sounding fake southern accent. Like, <laughs> like you from Nolan's. Like, we know it's got to be fake. <laughs> no one can eat that accent that long. <laughs> but I guess that was part of his charm. Because believe it or he not, was, he's still a, a teenager. Too. Right? It's like, wait a minute, you shouldn't be in high school anymore. How old are you? Like, are you, aren't you 1800? <laughs> and we also are introduced to Cupid. And here's the thing, Cupid is actually in a spin-off show they had for Monster High. They have one in the almost the same universe called Ever After High. But she started on this show and was completely different by the time they got her to Ever After High. And here she was more of like, not the gossip one, but the advice, the one that had all the advice to people that call on her radio show. And most of the time it had to do with romance. But when she got to Ever After High, she was more of the ditzy, clueless, uh, the clueless one didn't know how to use the arrows like her father, which is also Cupid, which is a little weird because you actually like how she was portrayed in this version. So it's a little odd they did that, but I can't say they did a unique twist on the character. So the movie starts off, her 1600th birthday is coming up, Claus trying to find something uh, to do for her that is unique, and everyone gives him ideas, and he keeps coming up with ideas that are kind of like um very male based things that he gets punished for, for it right he puts and his sister claudine is trying to steer him in the right direction he's not listening so the more he tries the more dracula becomes uh disheartened and then along comes valentine who <laughs> has ulterior motives and tries to sweep her off her feet and take her away from claude and he has his little vampire powers mm -hmm. so he hypnotizes her which kind of is funny because since she's a vampire you would think that would void each They're other mute, out yeah cancel each other out but somehow it works and again claude is working to keep her as his girlfriend while valentine tries to take her away and mm -hmm. then humor the ensues, love triangle thing <laughs> and lovey dovey things ensue and romance ensues and Twilight fun ensues and Twilight tries to mess things up again of course she does <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of course there's a happy ending there are no spoils because this franchise has been gone for a while of course there's a happy ending and Claude stays with Dracula but we won't tell you how, how why or what happens you have to watch yourself but it is fun and it's perfect for Valentine's Day and it's perfect for the month of February because again it's such a sweet fun movie and one of the big things about the Monster High franchise original was that it was really wholesome. You Pretty didn't have much, any windows, yeah. you didn't have fan service, you didn't have any of that, and they all were just being these really rich monsters children who were just again having high school fun. They had the little cliques, they had the ones, uh, the main characters who were the ones who were the most popular at the school. They traveled, you got to share in their fun and in their lives and that's what made it just absolutely unique as a franchise itself yeah i totally agree and I really miss a lot of these movies because they were just Definitely. all fun to watch and from the first one to the last one of the original franchise they were all really amazing to watch you know my favorite so and dracula is a favorite she's definitely a fan favorite she's one of my favorite top five for sure she's adorable she sounds so cute uh, debbie derryberry does a wonderful job of making her sound adorable she reminds you of an anime character a little bit you yeah. think about it and ironically monster I does have a little mini anime series so you might want to look for that on youtube if it's still available yes and it's fun and you get to see how differently it's portrayed in Japan versus how it's portrayed to the rest of the world, but it's still fun. Right. So if you have seen Why Do Ghouls Fall in Love or any of the Monster High franchise movies, let us know what you think in the comments below. If you love to hear and see more Monster High podcast reviews, let us know that as well. Right. And be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get updates on future podcasts and World of Pause videos. Absolutely. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Oscar Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. Rivers and streams, plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket, giving to you later on in the form of a locket.